amazing how many people that are in a terminal situation can reverse it if they take control of their own, you know, issues. More people should do it. But we give it all up to MDs, the right prescriptions for drugs from drug companies that own them. Is this something like they're going to get handed? They're going to get handed a pile of papers with numbers on No, them? you have to beg for this. They don't hand you this stuff. Yep. <laughs> Well, you do. They don't. They they make you believe that you don't have. You don't under, and you won't understand it. Right. They always tell you that. I mean, the first time I asked for it, the doctor said, "Why do you want it?" And I'm like, "I want it. I want it for my file. Everybody that has Hep C should have a file of their lab work, and because they need it. And if you go to a different doctor, you can hand it to them. You know, they don't have to go through all this." big long trail to find it and, and you know what your condition is then but it is yours you own it you paid for it and it belongs to you so don't let them tell you that it's you don't need it it's really important this is a typical laboratory report what your doctor receives when he takes your blood and it's uh, this is a simple one. Usually there'll be more pages than this. There'll be an introductory page. Might state what it is. And, uh, but this is the basic page that you need to understand the most. And across the top we have the doctor's name, the patient's name, then date of birth, basic information, date that you had the blood drawn, etc. What the part we need to focus on is the test name the results, the reference range, those are the important item. For this one, the test name is cretin and say total protein and albulin, those are the first three. And in here you have your results. And over here, they have the reference range. So on this test, this person's cretin was 1.0 and the reference range is 0 0.5 <clears throat> to 1.4, which means this is right in the middle, so that's good. And down here on the ALT and AST, the test name, results on this person, it's over here on out of range or high, marked with an H. And over here is the reference range, so you can easily see how high you are. And these are a, a typical liver panel, total protein, albulin, ALT, AST, alk, phos, alkaline phosphatase, and ferritin, which most doctors don't test for, but they should. And alpha feta protein, which is a tuber marker for hep C. But you have your test names, your results, whether you're high or low, and your reference range. And if, all you do, if you just learn how to scan across and read those, you'll know what your lab work says. What is, uh, like, albulin? What does that mean, though? It's just a word. Well, albulin is a protein that's in your blood. And there's 12 trillion cells per number. So this person has 4.4. That's high. And the higher, the better. It's good. Uh, so it's 4.4 times 12 trillion is how many albulums you have in your, uh, or how much albulum protein that you have in your blood. Albulum, which is the most critical item on any of these tests, is this particular person is 2.8. That's very low, 2.2, and life becomes very precious. Uh, if you can get your albulum up to 5, you are more likely to have a spontaneous remission. Albulum is a life force. Without albulum, you're not making it. And in cirrhosis, your, al your liver produces much less albulum. And when your body starts to shut down, whether it's heart disease or many other types of problems, your albulum will turn off, and that's usually one of the key items for the end time. What can you do to get that number up? It's difficult. There are some people out there that say, well, albulum's a protein, so you eat protein. 
that that's not effective. Uh, if you take two or three net cell a day, they're pure protein, it can go up over time. There'll be other pages. There'll be uh, two, three pages. Depends on what lab work your doctor prescribes for you. So all you have to do is read it. And these are our recommendations for hepatitis C for males. Uh, PCR, which is a viral load test. The CBC, which means complete blood count. And an AFP, which is a tumor market, you know, if, you got, if you're a guy, you get a PSA or prostate test once a year. It's a good idea if you're over 50. If not, don't worry about it. But yeah, it's easy and quick and little instruction, and you should be able to read your own lab work with no problems. Is there a problem with uh, doctors not wanting to test often enough? Or, uh... If you have insurance, they'll test as much as they can. So I know a lot of insurance companies today won't cover the viral load test unless you're doing treatment, meaning taking interferon. Uh, and I don't have insurance, but I, I, I listen to people all the time that tell me, well, my insurance company won't do this or won't do that, and my doctor doesn't feel it's necessary. Whereas I have some clients who get an ALT, AST, platelets, albulum, iron, and ferritin, a couple others, every month. You go in and you talk to the lab and you get, you pay cash, you can get a real good deal. I pay uh, cash for mine and my ferritin test is $15 and if you have insurance it's 150 So your copay is bigger than my payment. And anybody can do that, it's not just me, it's just I don't have insurance. So, so where do people get these tests if the doctor won't give it to them unless they're on the treatment? One good place is order your own lab tests on the front of my website, alternativemedicinesolution.com. And if you click on it, it goes to this lab company where you can order your own tests. In fact, one day they called me and they said, Mr. Wright, we thank you for having our, a referral on your website and we would like to know what your clients would need to be tested for that we don't offer. So I told them the test, viral load, and a couple others, and uh, they now include those in, in their protocol. And another item everybody should get. Are you getting, uh, are you getting a cut off these tests? No, no, I've only ever talked to them twice on the phone. I don't even know their name or anything about them. It's just that they offer lab work without having to go to the doctor, and that's something a lot of people want. And the reason I put it on my website is that reason, period, to make things easier for people. And also the Fibrosure blood test, that's the standard of treatment in Germany and most of Europe for determining the condition of your liver. In the United States, they want you to do a biopsy. And they tell you you have to. Biopsies cost a lot of money, and the doctor that prescribes it gets a big cut. And... Uh, a lot of people don't believe that. They don't understand it. A Fibrosure blood test is expensive. They're about $700. But a biopsy today can be $10,000. So uh, it's... And they, and they also have a thing called a, a fibro scan, which is a picture they take, that is the best way currently to evaluate the condition of your liver. But there's only nine facilities in the United States with those. Other normal items... Like here's the iron, this one's normal at 13.4, the reference range of 12.20. They always have a cholesterol panel, and cholesterol is really not relevant. Almost everyone with liver disease they have low cholesterol in at least a few of the categories. Triglycerides are usually high. And then at the end, sometimes they'll have a little plan for you that'll tell you to keep taking more interferon, even though your platelets are about to point to kill you, and that the uh, albulum is, is you're about over, but it's still the, on, this, on this plan for the one I just showed you, continue interferon, they call it interfergon, that's the one made by uh, Amgen, and Rebitrol to complete a 48-week 48 48 week protocol. So... 
this doctor is killing this patient by recommending that he continue this. And when it's, his albumin is almost dead numbers? Yeah. Both the albumin and platelets on this particular person are near terminal levels, and the doctor's recommendation is right there. This is common. I see this every day, and it's shocking. Okay, well, when you get your lab work, some of the first things that are on most lab work would be WBC and RBC. WBC means white blood count. RBC means red blood count. Often in a viral state, the white blood count would be a little higher, sometimes a lot higher. In fibrosis and cirrhosis, the RBC is often lower, not always. And we go down here to the MCV, MCH, MCHC. In hepatitis C, these are always, almost always up or down slightly. You can actually make those all normal by taking acetyl F glutathione. And PLT, that stands for platelets. That's a test everyone with hep C should get. Uh, this particular one is low at 55. If you're under 140, you're, you know, you're in cirrhosis or fibrosis, usually, almost always. So the way you would raise that is by taking Norwegian shark liver oil. You don't want it to get much lower than this. If this one's at 55. Uh, Russ used to work for me years ago. He died at 54. Platelet's 54. He's actually 54 years old also. And down here it says iron saturation. There's an iron panel. And it usually consists of four items. This one's iron saturation. Transferritin. T well, that's a different test. This one's a little different. They're, and they're all different, so remember that. They don't always come back looking the same unless you get the same prescription and go to the same lab. So normally you'll have a TIBC, which means total iron binding content, and you'll have total iron, iron serum, and iron. And often in hep C, at least one of those would be high. Rarely they're low, but occasionally they are low, like this one, transferritin, which is similar to the ferritin count. This one's low, and that one's almost never low. And the TSH, that's the thyroid test, and there's three or four different thyroid tests, and about, I don't know, 8-10% of people with hep C have a thyroid problem, and after interferon use, you know, Killed a lot more people to have a thyroid problem, and usually for the rest of their lives. Okay, there's AST. That's a liver enzyme. This one's high, 72. Almost everyone with hep C, that number will be high. And by implementing my program one, you can make that go down. Do they have uh, normal ranges on these tests? Oh, you yeah. Have? You should be well, on this one, and they're all different, so keep that in mind. This one is 8 to 40 that's normal. Some of them will be 10 to 60. So they're, they're usually different. Is that a difference of opinion, or is it a different test? Oh, no, they just use a different test. In hep C, this, if the upper reference range is 40, it's not going to, you know, a lot of people are 100, 150. It's good to get it down, but it's not life-threatening in most cases. And here's the ALK. Where's AST? Usually ALT and AST are together. This one, the ALT, is down here. This one's 48. That's high. Its reference is 0 to 44. Usually this one would be 0 to 60. But they vary. And this up here, alkaline phosphate, most people with hep C, that's high. This one's normal. There's a lot of different lab work. And if you don't understand it when you get it, call me or send me an email. And I'll explain it to you, and I'm happy to do it. It's difficult to go over just a piece of someone else's lab work and explain it because everybody's is a little bit different. And often people... Are become alarmed when they see the viral load in the millions because that's scary. 
and the doctor will tell you if you don't use interferon, you're going to get liver cancer and die. Just call us, 877-676-1615, and we'll explain your lab work. And you can fax it to us, 928-999-0104. And I'll read it. I'll call you and or email you and tell you what it says and help you understand it so you know what it says. Often I'll have a client call or email and say, my doctor said my liver enzymes were off the charts. Now, I don't know what that means, but what I see is, oh, that usually means it's 10 or 20 points elevated, and it's nothing serious. And the person goes into a panic, their blood pressure goes up, and they're scared to death. So this fear and intimidation, the medical community is uh, in, you know, causing to happen in you, is not necessary. So if you need help with your lab work, we're here to help you. I was told I wasn't going to make it for more than three to five years in 1995. So uh, living proof you can do well if you take care of yourself. Which I don't do completely, but I work on it. <laughs>